Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a snow globe in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project and when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got three CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with new courses being released regularly, covering a bunch of stuff we don't usually go into on YouTube. So if you want to test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two-month trial that will give you access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So it's almost Christmas again, and we've just kicked off our hashtag snow globe challenge, where you can win some epic CG prizes for submitting work that features a snow globe. So I thought we could do a snow globe tutorial as well, just to get the ball rolling. You can get all the details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge at the link below. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and do this. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is open up our render settings and we're working at HD 1920 by 1080 and as usual we're going with 24 frames per second which is the standard for film. Let's close that. We'll also come down here and extend our timeline a bit. Let's give ourselves 200 frames to play with and we'll just drag this out here. And now we're going to kick things off by modeling our globe. So let's come up here and bring in our old friend the sphere. And if we come over to the display settings and turn our lines on, we can see this is looking pretty low res at the moment. We want our globe to be nice and smooth. So we'll head over here to the object tab and crank up these segments. Let's try 60. And now that's looking a lot smoother. So we can probably turn those lines off again. And this is going to be made of glass. So we need to give it a bit of thickness. And we can do that with the cloth surface. And if you're like me and you're using Cinema 4D version 21, you can find that up here under Create, Generator, and here's our cloth surface. And we'll make sure we're holding Alt when we bring this in so it's automatically applied to our sphere over here. And we can see that's now been applied. So let's take a look at the options down in our cloth surface. You can see we've got a setting for thickness here. And if we adjust that, it looks like it's just scaling our sphere, but it is actually adding some thickness. And we can probably see that a bit easier if we change the views by hitting the middle mouse button. Then we can head over to the top view and hit that middle mouse button again to go into that. And we'll zoom in a bit and you can see we've got two surfaces here. This is the outer surface and the inner surface. So this is the thickness. And now if we adjust this, we're changing that distance. So because we're making nice thin glass, let's just leave this pretty low. Let's try one centimeter. And I think that'll do for now. Let's just go back to our perspective view. And now we're done with the modeling of the globe. So let's rename this. We'll just call it globe. And now we can start modeling the base of our snow globe. And we can probably do that a bit easier if we change views again. This time we'll go with the front view and we'll zoom in a bit. We're just going to draw out a profile shape of the base that we can use in a lathe object. So let's come up here and grab our trusty spline pen tool. Then when we use this to draw, we want to snap to these grid points here. So we'll come over to this magnet icon and turn on the snapping and we'll come in there again and also make sure we've got work plane snapping on as well. And now we can draw out a profile shape and you can do whatever shape you want, but we're gonna keep it nice and simple. We'll just come four of these grid squares down this way and we'll put our first point. Then we'll come over to the side until we're in line with the edge of our sphere and we'll put another point here. And then we want the top of our base to cut through our sphere here. So maybe we'll come up one, two squares and we don't want it to be completely straight. We actually want the top of this to taper in. So I'll put another point here and then we want to come across here until we're in line with the first point we made. Now we might just zoom in to make sure we get the exact right spot. Right there on the grid looks good. So we'll make another point here. And finally, we'll just zoom out and finish this off by reconnecting back to the start. So now we'll go back to our perspective view and you can see the shape we've created in there now. So the next step is to use the lathe to turn this into a solid round object. So with our spline selected, we'll come up to this menu and we'll bring in a lathe. 
And remember to hold Alt so it's automatically applied, like so. And we can rename our lathe to something like base. And here's the shape that that lathe has generated for us. But if we take a look at these edges, they're looking a little bit too pointy for my liking. So let's round those off. So we'll grab our spline and we'll just hide our lathe for now. We wanna select these two points here. So we'll come up here to our rectangular selection and we'll just click and drag over these two guys. Then so we can see this better, we'll turn the lathe back on again. Then with our two points, we'll right click and we'll choose chamfer. Now all we need to do is click and drag to round those points off. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. But if we look a bit closer at these edges, it's looking a little bit low res. And we can check that if we turn the lines back on. We definitely want some more subdivisions in here so this is nice and smooth. So we'll head back over to our lathe and we just need to bring up the subdivisions under the objects tab here. So let's crank that up to about 60. And you can see straight away that's looking a lot smoother. So we'll turn the lines off again. And we'll zoom out. And there is our snow globe. So now we just need to model the ground inside. So let's go back up to this menu and we'll bring in a cube. Then we wanna move this guy down. So we'll grab our move tool and we'll switch back to the object mode. And we'll just bring this guy down here. And it might be better if we do this in the front view. And we just wanna move this to the level we want the ground plane to be inside here. So we'll zoom in a tad. And I think I want it one, two, three, four, five of these grid squares above the baseline. So somewhere around there, but you can have your ground plane wherever you want. And we'll go back to the perspective view. And now to create that ground plane exactly within this sphere, we're going to use a bool. And the plan is to cut this cube out of this sphere. So we can repurpose the sphere we've already made here. If we grab that and hold control and drag it up here, we can create a duplicate. Then with it selected, we're going to come up to this menu and we wanna grab a bool. And we need to hold Alt when we bring that in so it's automatically applied to our new sphere, like so. Then we'll just hide our globe so it doesn't get in the way. And we'll take a look at the options in our bool. And you can see here, we've got the Boolean type currently set to A subtract B. So it's actually asking for two objects, an object A and an object B. So let's try adding a second object to our bool here. We're going to use our cube. So we'll drag that in under here. And that gives us a shape like this, where the cube has been cut out of the sphere. And just so that's super clear, let's go back to the ball. We've got A subtracting B. So A the sphere minus B the cube. And this is what we're left with. Although we kind of want the opposite of this, we just want to be left with the piece down the bottom. So basically we need to invert this. And I think we can do that if we change the bool type from A subtract B to A intersect B. And that leaves us with the part of the sphere that's intersecting with the cube. So now we have our ground and it should fit perfectly inside our globe. So let's rename our bool. Let's just call it ground. And I think our ground is looking a bit boring. It's very flat at the moment. We want this to look like a bunch of snow that's been built up. So we wanna make this surface nice and bumpy. So let's come up here and turn the lines on so we can check our geometry. And you can see we've got some nice quads down here, but this surface doesn't have any subdivisions which is going to make deforming it pretty much impossible. So the way to get some more segments in here actually depends on our ball and whichever object is cutting into it. In this case, that's the cube. So if we click on that guy, you can see we've only got one segment in each axis. So if we crank all these values up, let's go with 20 in each one. We now have some geometry to deform. And we actually have to do our deformations on the surface of the cube because that's what's cutting into this. So with our cube selected, we'll come up to the deformers menu and we're going to bring in a displacer deformer. And when we bring this in, we wanna hold shift so it's automatically applied as a child to our cube here. And it's now affecting it, although we don't see much of a change at the moment. And that's because we need to change a few settings over here in our displacer. So let's head over to the shading tab and we wanna add some noise to this. So we'll click here and grab the noise. And straight away, we've got our bumpy surface over here, but I think it might be a little bit too bumpy. 
We just want a few big lumps here, so it looks like snowy ground. So we'll go over here and click into that noise. And all we need to do is bring up the global scale. And we'll just bring that up to the point where we have less bumps and everything's looking a bit smoother. And I think that should work for us. And if you wanted to, you could go back here and over to the object tab. And you can also fine tune this with the strength slider. But I think this works for our snowy ground. So let's go back up here and turn our glow back on. Then we'll click on that guy. We want to be able to see through this. So if we head over to the basic tab of our cloth surface, we can turn on the X-ray. And we'll just zoom out a bit. And we can also turn off the lines. And we can now see through that glass and we've got our final snow globe model. So the next step is to create loads of little snowflakes in here. So when we animate this, we can shake them around inside the globe. So let's hide our globe yet again. And we're going to model a very simple snowflake. Let's come up here and you can use whatever shape you want, but I want to keep our snowflake as low res as possible because we're going to be using dynamics. So I'm actually going to use the platonic object. And you can see when we bring that guy in, it's super low resolution and it's just made of a couple of triangles but it's also probably a bit too big. We just want this to be a tiny little snowflake. So let's head over to the object tab and we wanna bring that radius way down. Let's try something like 0.5. And now we've got our tiny little snowflake in here. So the next step is to clone loads of these guys onto our ground plane here. So with our platonic object selected, which we can now rename to snowflake, let's come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll bring in a cloner. And again, we'll hold Alt when we bring that in, so it's automatically applied like so. And now we've got our clones going up in this direction. But we actually want them to stick to the ground here. So first, we need to isolate this surface. So we'll need to extract that out of our bool setup here. And we can do that by right clicking on our bool, and we'll come down here and select Current State to Object. And that's now created a duplicate of our ground. And if we pop that open, we've got two merged meshes from our bool. We've got the sphere section and the cube section of our bool setup. And the sphere section is this part down here. So if we just delete that, and actually we should probably hide the bool as well so we don't see that. We're now left with just the top part or the part of the bool that was created by the cube. And we're going to use this with our cloner in just a second. But first, let's move this out of here. And we don't need this null anymore, so we'll delete that. And we'll rename this. This is where our snow will be collecting at the beginning of our animation. So let's just call it Snow Surface. So now, with our cloner, we want these clones to be on this surface. So we need to change the mode from Linear to Object. And the object we want to use is our Snow Surface. So we'll drag that into this slot here. And now we've got a bunch of snowflakes on this surface. And that's because we've got the distribution set to surface. And right now we've just got 20 of these snowflakes on here, but we can change that by adjusting the count. So let's just bring that up to 100 for now. Okay. So we can also hide that now. And we'll switch our ground back on. And all of our snowflakes are sitting on top of that nicely. So it's probably a good time to start animating this. Let's come over here and turn our glow back on as well. And then we might just tidy this up a bit. Let's come over here and bring in a null and we'll rename that. Let's call it snow globe. And then we wanna grab our ground, our base, our globe and our snow surface, all of the objects that make up our model and we'll drag them into our null. And we're going to animate this. So basically we want this to move up, shake around and then come back down again and all of our little snowflakes will float around dynamically inside here. So with our null selected, we'll come down here to the coordinates tab and we wanna set a keyframe on frame zero at the position it's currently at. And we're only going to animate this in the Y direction. So we just need to set a keyframe right here. Then we'll scooch forward to frame 10 and we want it to move up. So we'll bring the Y value up to 80 centimeters and set another keyframe. Then we need it to go back down on frame 30. So we'll set this back to zero and add another keyframe. Then we'll play back our animation and it goes up and down. Beautiful. 
So now, when it gets to its highest position on frame 10, we want this to shake a bit. And you could animate this manually with the rotation controls here, but we're gonna do something a little bit fancy. So with our snow globe selected, we'll come up to tags, animation tags, and we'll bring in a vibrate tag. And these are the settings for that here. And we wanna animate the rotation only. So let's activate that. And we'll turn these off by setting them all to zero for now. And we'll go back to frame zero where we don't want any rotation. So we'll set a keyframe with them set to zero. Then we'll go forward to frame 10 when this is up in the air and we'll come over here and add some rotation. Let's just give every axis 30 degrees and we'll set a keyframe. And then when it returns to the ground on frame 30, we no longer want any shake on this. So we'll just go and zero these out again and set another keyframe. And now if we play this through, we've got a nice simple animation. So now we can make our snowflakes dynamic so they float around when we shake our snow globe. So we'll grab our cloner and rename that. This is now our snow. And we're going to make this dynamic. So we'll come up to tags, simulation tags, and we'll make this a rigid body. So now if we rewind this and hit play, all of that snow just drops through everything. So we need something for the snow to collide with. And it actually needs to collide with the globe and the ground inside the globe. So let's rewind and we need to create another mesh with just those two parts. And we can do that from our bool. So we'll hold control and drag this up here to create a copy. Then we can hide our ground and our globe while we work on this. And because we duplicated the ground, that's all we can see here. But basically we want the invert of this. So let's go into our duplicate bool and down here with the type, all we need to do is change it from A intersect B to A subtract B. And now we're left with the exact opposite. And now we can use this shape for our dynamic collisions. So let's just rename that to container because it's going to contain our snowflakes. And now we need to make this part of our dynamic simulation. So with it selected, we'll come up to tags and down to simulation tags. And this time we wanna make it a collider body. And now that this is going to be part of our simulation, we can hide that. Then we'll turn our ground back on. And now if we hit play, our snow globe goes up and our snowflakes stay within this container area. Although you might've noticed some of them escaped down the bottom, but we can fix that easy enough. Let's hit Control D on the keyboard to bring up our project settings. Then we'll head over to the dynamics tab and down to the expert tab. And we can bring up the steps per frame and solver iterations, which tell Cinema 4D to do more calculations every frame of our dynamics. And if we bring these both up to 20, we should get a more accurate simulation. So let's give that a go. And it's definitely better, but we're still getting some falling through. And I think that's actually because if we zoom in, all our little snowflakes are actually intersecting with the ground. And that's causing some of them to shoot away from our container. So all we need to do is just lift these off ever so slightly. And we can do that back in our cloner. If we head over to the transform tab, we've got some offset controls here. And I think in this case, we need to offset these clones in the Z direction. So we'll just put one centimeter in here. And now they're a little bit higher and they're no longer intersecting with that surface. So let's give this a play. And now all of our snowflakes are staying within that container and they're settling on the ground. But if you've ever had a snow globe before, you know this is not how they work. They're usually full of water, so the snowflakes can float around inside here. So to get an effect like that, you could come over to the dynamics tag on our snow and play around with the force and the dynamic settings. But a quick and dirty hack I found that gives you pretty much the same result is to just hit Control D again on the keyboard and under the dynamic settings in the general tab, we can just turn off the gravity. And if we make this zero, we'll now have zero gravity. And if we give that a play, our snowflakes go up and then they float down and start floating around inside our globe. Now we can probably even turn that back on again now. So we'll just make the globe visible again. 
and we'll have a look at that. And if you wanted to, you could have the snowflakes eventually falling back to the ground by just animating the gravity to come back on again. And one tiny thing before we wrap this up, if we zoom in, we can see some weird little triangles happening in our ground. And we can fix that easy enough by just turning on the create single object. And that's converted our bool into a single mesh and everything's looking a lot smoother. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And as with all of our tutorials, if you want to get your hands on the full render ready project files, which include all the final lighting, materials and Octane render settings, you can get them from our Patreon page. Big shout out to this month's patrons for supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials. You guys are the best. And that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you could leave a like or a dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.